So hey everyone, in this video I want to demonstrate a cool little concept, a uh, prototype feature of Video Ninja, and that is the ability to publish from Video Ninja into Twitch directly without needing to download anything, without needing OBS Studio, just directly and with very low latency from Video Ninja into Twitch. Uh, it is experimental, so it's, it's evolving, maturing, but I wanted to still show you. Uh, you might recall in a previous video, I showed that um, OBS has the option to publish to Video Ninja through an, a still in, develop, um, in development uh, publishing protocol called WIP. So in a development build of OBS, currently you can publish from OBS into Video Ninja directly into the browser. And while that feature is not yet officially released in OBS, and it's probably going to be several months before it's mature enough that I'd suggest any user use it with Video Ninja, um, just because there's, there's a few limitations with the current version and development build. Um, it, it's really exciting that OBS is getting that feature. Um, but that has sparked a lot of other companies and services to adopt WIP as well. So um, Cloudflare uh, has it, but also Twitch has it. So um, it's actually the same developer who's been pushing uh, for WIP in OBS, a developer named Sean, who's uh, also pushed it through at Twitch. Um, so here's this page. I have uh, video.ninja slash WIP. It contains a set of some of the WIP functionalities that Video Ninja has kind of just as a, a sandbox way to play with the functionality. Um, you know, here you can put your OBS token and if you publish to whip.video.ninja, you can then uh, play from OBS here. Um, if you publish from OBS to something like Cloudflare, uh, the other whip ingest, you can put Cloudflare's web it's kind of like the opposite of a ingest token. It's the export token, the egress token. You can put that here uh, and play that uh, WebRTC stream in Video Ninja. Kind of cool. Uh, but just like OBS, Video Ninja also can publish WIP. That's kind of how it works with MeshCast. MeshCast ingests the, a very much like a WIP ingest um, endpoint. Um, and so it... it Video Ninja has long supported the concept of WIP output. So if you put a WIP endpoint here, you could publish to it, a stream token optional. Um, but Twitch's WIP ingest uh, looks like this. So HTTPS colon slash slash G dot web or JC dot live hyphen video dot net colon four 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 three slash V two slash offer. Uh, not something simple to remember. Um, I have it proxied um, to that URL, something simpler, just twitch.video.ninja. But since you shouldn't be sharing your uh, stream tokens for Twitch, and if you proxy it through my server, you're indirectly sharing it with me, you know, um, still I'd say secure, but uh, you shouldn't be sharing your stream token with anyone. So you should probably use the official one. Um, but because that's kind of convoluted, at, at present, hopefully it gets shortened or simplified. I created the second option here, which um, has it pre-configured. So you don't need to worry about that URL. You can just put your stream token for Twitch here and go live. So to get your stream token, you go to your Twitch dashboard, you go to settings, stream, and you copy your stream token. You know, you wanna keep it private. Uh, and then you drop it in here, go live. Now it forwards you to Video Ninja with uh, the parameter set. So we have whip equals the Twitch ingest destination and then your whip push token goes here. Uh, you should not be able to see that. Um, I'm going to reset my stream token afterwards. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, your stream token goes there. And then you can share your screen. So if you wanted to share Netflix, output you could share Netflix this way or you share your camera I have a open source videos selected 
Um, and we're publishing. Now, it doesn't look like we're publishing. If we open up this view link, you know, it works as normal with Twitch, uh, with Video Ninja, sorry. But if we go to my Twitch page and I go to my stream manager, we see the uh, output. Throws an apple. Throws an apple. So it's pretty low latency. You know, um, very cool. Uh, again, this is happening from the browser to Twitch. We've had about one or two seconds. So about as low latency as you can get right now from Twitch. And it has, in the future, the potential for AV1 encoding, so 30% better compression, uh, Opus Audio, or you know, higher quality audio, potentially 4,800 uh, hertz. Um, bypassing, there's just so many cool things we could do. If you are an IRL streamer, you could have dynamic bit rates. So if your connection starts losing bandwidth, you could actually have it just automatically lower the quality um, without having to do any sort of fancy RTMP configuration. You can just publish and it just handles it all for you. Um, yeah, this is a prototype at the moment though. If at the moment, if I try to change the camera feed, um, it's gonna, it's gonna freeze up. Um, and Twitch doesn't quite like the fact that when I change tracks. Um, so I need to work around that. And, and, and there are ways I can work around that by using the canvas mode, uh, of publishing rather than track mode. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of cool. But I didn't want to leave it there. It's not fully, it's not 100% useful. You know, if you want to publish your webcam or publish uh, a website, that's a great start. But I thought, okay, right now you might want to be doing something like a an actual show. So you invite guest one, maybe I make the guest uh, Steve. Um, Steve's going to have this camera, we'll bring that back over and close it. Um, and then we have another guest and this is uh, label Joey. And I'm just going to show you there. You know, Joey joins. Um, cool. Maybe Joey has a different camera. There we go. And now you're in the control room, you're producing the show. Normally you take the scene link and you put it into OBS and then publish via RTMP to Twitch. But now you can put this in here and you can say, I wanna show a clock and I wanna show, show, show labels. Um, you can customize it however you want. So here we have um, this stream. Uh, but yeah, I can go here, I can edit this. I Going back, instead of making it a new, instead of creating a new browser tab, I can just edit the URL, do it here directly, show label. So the, up, the label's been updated. Now, the little Easter egg is I can say publish via whip. So right click the scene link and I can publish. It asks me how I want to publish. I want to publish to Twitch. I'm going to grab my uh, stream token. I'm going to go back. It's a pop-up window. I'll put my stream token in here. And I'm going to say, uh, select a window. It's already set up. If you're using Chrome or Chromium-based browsers, you just need to say, this is the tab I want to share. I have to show this pop-up, unfortunately. So you just select yourself and then you go live and the top left it will say we're publishing um, the screen size might flicker a little bit as you see right now um, I'm trying to programmatically make the window fixed at a certain resolution uh, Chrome's a little bit buggy on that front it's not listening to me uh, but you can just ignore that for now now let's go and check out the stream manager. 
and we can see that we are going live. Twitch. So if you want to check out my Twitch stream, go to Twitch, uh, Everett. Um, you can follow me on Twitch if you'd like to. Um, but I don't actually go live on Twitch really ever. But here we go. You know? um, you can ignore the fact it's flickering between the two views. That's something I'm going to be working on more. But yeah, uh, as a director now, I can add or remove people from a scene that I'm publishing, for example. I can customize it. But I'm now going live with an overlay. I added the clock, I added, you know, names, all these other things. Um, if I resize it, you know, it shows that I resized it here as well. Uh, so I'll continue to work on that, but that's kind of the proof of concept. I don't really know how to get, make it publish without opening a new window or without using a canvas. Um, if I had the electron capture app do this, I could do that as a download rather than as a pop-up. But uh, part of the proof of concept here is no download needed. Very cool, I think, though. And if you want to stop the stream, you just uh, either stop the screen share or close the tab. And it should end the stream within a few seconds. There we go. Now, we can take this further, of all things. So let's close that. Um, let's go to our Mixer app. Now, I should have prototyped the Mixer like a year or two ago. It's come a long way. Um, so it's prettier now and less buggy, more features, lots of OBS integrations. So uh, still lots of reason to use OBS with the Mixer app. But as a proof of concept, it's getting kind of fun and cool because we can uh, invite a guest in. Maybe let's invite another guest in as well. Um, right? We can then see what the scene looks like. Right? We can uh, maybe change it to that mix. You can change the layout by just changing the option. And this can be synced with OBS. So if you change a scene in OBS, it can automatically change the layout in the Mixer app that you have linked. Or you can have the opposite. You can change the layout in the Mixer app and it will change the scene in OBS depending on if it's synced. Um, but let's not look at it through an OBS point of view. Let's look at it from how can I publish directly to Twitch? So again, um, I just forgot my Twitch. Let's go to Twitch. Uh, let's go here. Let's go to our creator dashboard. We'll go to settings, stream, copy our URL, go back here, enter our stream token, go live, select the window. Okay, we're, we're live. Now if we uh, check out our stream manager, we're live, right? Um, let's put that here. Let's put this here. Now we're going to do this. Uh, let's go to that. Oh, I went to the wrong place. Um, there. Okay, cool. Then, okay, let's see what happens. I change here. Three, two, three, two. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, there we go. Live. What's it doing? It doesn't like video being black. That's a problem. Okay. One, two, there we go. One, two, one, two. Anyways, um, the point is, I'm changing the, the scene here, and it's updating automatically in um, Twitch uh, because, well, here's what we're publishing to Twitch. 
I just I can I just move that to the background and the mixer remotely controls that layout. I just, just um, and now I can change it from here. And I can customize these layouts you know, by moving. Uh, there we go. So I can resize these elements. And then I can save. And as you can see, the uh, layout changes. Then when I change the element, um, it matches that now in uh, Twitch. So we have the basic concepts of scenes. We can customize them. Uh, that's kind of cool. You can put a background image or background color in if you don't want it black. Um, Twitch seems to not like things being completely black. So just keep that in mind. Um, but experimental. An experimental proof of concept. So I think with a little bit more work, a little more refining, uh, this could be a quite usable way of publishing to Twitch, maybe even YouTube in the near future, at the same time, from your browser with just one or two seconds of a latency end to end. No downloads and enough core functionality to do basic shows. Um, like you're not, I wouldn't be running my a tournament uh, or some large event through this, but if you just want to talk on camera to Twitch, maybe invite a friend in and just have like a little podcast, a little interview, this could be a, an easy way of doing it from even a Chromebook, something that you can't even download on BS on. Uh, and with AV1 support in the browser, you know, uh, a lot of really cool technology and features will be at your fingertips without having to download anything and for free. So that's kind of cool too, right? Um, who knows? Really exciting future, guys. I appreciate you listening. So that's the demonstration of publishing from Video Ninja to Twitch without needing anything but the browser. Okay, bye guys.